Around the planet, astronomers have huge parabolic dishes and large arrays of antennas turned towards the skies, radio telescopes. Radio astronomy, which extends the observable electromagnetic spectrum by many orders of magnitude, is relatively young. The first detection of radio waves from the cosmos dates from the 1930s. It has since allowed, for example, the discovery of pulsars and quasars. But radio telescopes must be very large, in theory several kilometers in diameter to achieve the same resolution as optical telescopes. And the only way to do this is by coupling two or more of them, the further apart the better, and to analyze their combined signals. Angular resolution or sharpness of vision in radio or optics depends on the size of your receiver, of your telescope. In the case of this telescope, its angular resolution depends on the size of the antenna. In this case, 25 meters. If you want to achieve high angular resolution, you need to create a larger telescope. And to avoid uh, increase of expenses due to the size of the uh, antenna, you might create an interferometer, a system which consists of two or more elements of this hypothetic large antenna. And if you connect them in a special way, you can artificially create a telescope of that big size. The European hub for what is called Very Long Baseline Interferometry is situated in Dwingelu in the Netherlands. It's there at the Joint Institute for VLBI in Europe, JIVE, that are processed the signals of radio telescopes sometimes situated on the other side of the globe, all synchronized like a well-tuned orchestra to observe the same cosmic target and sending vast amounts of data. Typical experiment uh, nowadays bring to us data from telescopes with a rate of about one gigabit per second. Just to give you some impression of how much data this is. Um, typical VLBI experiment in one experiment uh, collects as much data as would be stored on several thousand standard DVD with movies. Very long baseline interferometry is indispensable to see the invisible in the sharpest possible way, cosmic phenomena that are only detectable by the radio waves they emit. At the moment um, I'm looking at an object which is where massive stars are forming. Um, so this is in our galaxy um, which is about six um, light years away and this technique allows us to see very very fine detail right inside the, the um, star forming region. So we can actually see individual clumps of gas collapsing by gravity and to form stars. We're discovering new things all the time in radio astronomy. Um, it's a very big and exciting field. Um, people study things like pulsars and active galaxies um, using radio astronomy. Um, so new, new discoveries are made very frequently. Since the data collected by radio telescopes can be processed to provide the precise location of an object and its movement, JIVE has also contributed to space missions. Antennas around the world, for instance, track the ultimate seconds of ESA's Smart One lunar mission and the descent of the Huygens probe onto Saturn's moon, Titan. In the case of Huygens, we were able to pinpoint position of Huygens during its descent in the atmosphere of Titan with accuracy of one kilometer. And remember that the distance between us and Titan uh, during the Huygens descent was about eight astronomical units. That is 1.2 billion kilometers. But even greater feats lie ahead with a new generation system which will be using orbiting radio telescopes harnessed with ground-based ones, creating an immense virtual antenna. As in all fields of astronomy, VLBI is pushing back the limits of the invisible and the unknown. And scientists like those at JIVE feel that each day they are living a new adventure. The most important for me is that I'm, I'm, I'm looking uh, to things which, which are completely new and no one ever have looked before 
and then I have to understand and, and I, I have to try to explain what we see. So I, I, I make my little contribution to science and, and that's what, what fascinates me the most.